Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Mukesh's Tech Space. If you are new here, I post video tutorials on AWS, Lightcell, Azure, WordPress hosting, and many other easy to use and set up web hosting tools and services. I also post video tutorials on WordPress tips and tricks. So if you are interested in that type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel, sharing all these videos, and also liking all my videos. In this video, I wanted to show you another way to create a system user on your Lightcell server. I had recently made a video on creating an alias user for providing someone else access to your Lightcell server without you having to provide them your Ubuntu or Bitnami uh, password or uh, SSH keys. So in that video, we set, it, we set up a separate user, but it was an alias user off of the Bitnami user. Instead of an alias user, in this uh, video, we will modify those steps to create a completely separate user account and configure that user to be able to log in via SSH or SFTP with their own public and private keys. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, log into your Lightcell dashboard and then pick the instance that you want to create the new user on. Um, I have a sample WordPress instance already and this would also work for non-WordPress instances as well, as long as they are a Linux instance. So select the instance, go into the SSH console and in here, the first command we'll do is add the user. So sudo user add dash s bin bash uh, dash m and then the username so we'll just put sftp user but you can type in whatever username you would like and what that will do is also create your home directory for that user i've already tried this so it will it will um, it presented me with a warning that the home directory already exists um, so the next thing we'll do is add this user to the daemon user group and that's needed because the in Bitnami's instance uh, the daemon user group is where the WordPress or what uh, WordPress runs under as well. So let's go ahead and do that user mod dash g daemon and then sftp user. Uh, and then the next thing what we'll do is modify the home environment variable for this user so that when the user logs in, they are directly taken to the WordPress installation directory instead of their home directory. So let's do sudo vi and then we'll modify uh, sftp user uh, and then the dot bash rc file. So in here at the bottom of this file, we will um, type in a couple of commands. So the first one will be export home uh, equals opt bitnami uh, apps wordpress htdoc. So this is the WordPress installation directory for all the bitnami uh, based WordPress instances. So that if that's not your WordPress installation, then just make sure that uh, you put here the root or the WordPress installation directory for your app. And then we will uh, cd home uh, put that command and that's it. Save that. The next thing we'll do is now generate our uh, public and private SSH keys and that's the keys that will be used by the user to authenticate and log into the server. Uh, doing that is the most secure way uh, instead of doing a password. Um, in one of in the, my previous video where we set this up as a user alias, I showed how to generate SSH keys using a Windows tool, PuttyGen, I believe that's what I used. Uh, in this uh, video, what we'll do is use the SSH keygen command that's available on Linux, and we will do it this way. And if you, you're not aware, you know, you generate two keys, which are public and private keys. The public key is what we install on the server, 
and you on your computer have the private key. And when you log in, the two keys are compared and then you're authenticated onto the server. So when we run this, we'll generate two keys, the public and private key. So to do this, we will, um, let's create our SSH folder. So sudo make directory uh, dash p home sftp user uh, dot ssh. And then we'll cd into that directory. Okay, so we are now going to generate the SSH keys. So sudo SSH dash key gen is the command. And the first thing that it will prompt us is where do we want to save the key? So we will save the key in home uh, SFTP user and inside the SSH folder that we just created. And then we want to give it the file name. So we can, uh, let's name the file anything we want, but we'll name it SFTP user uh, key. And then it will ask for a passphrase. So to provide an extra layer of security, you can put a passphrase on your private key so that when you try to use it, it will uh, prompt you to enter this passphrase. And so if the key gets into somebody's hand that you don't want them to, at least they don't know the passphrase and they may not be able to use it. So it's good to keep it, but for our tutorial, uh, we won't uh, enter any passphrase. And hit enter. Okay, so now if we look at this folder, we will see two files generated based on the file name we gave it, SFTP user key. So that's SFTP user key and then SFTP user key dot pub. So dot pub means this is the public key and then this is the private key. And you'll need to download this private key onto your computer so that you can use that to log in. Public key, we need to um, set up the standard file called authorized underscore, underscore keys with the contents of this public key. sudo bash dash c cat and then our file sftp user key dot pub and then we'll send that to authorized underscore keys and i think that command is good hit enter perfect now if we look in this directory now we have a file called authorized keys okay so next we'll just modify some permissions so um, the first one we'll do is Home um, SFTP user dot SSH. The second one we'll do is for the file user dot SSH authorize keys. All right. Um, and then finally, we want to. Uh, change the ownership. If you have looked up here, the ownership on all of these files, including the SSH folder, because we were running everything against sudo, uh, the ownership is root. So we want to change that to this new username. So we will do um, sudo change owner recursive, and then our user is SFTP user, and then the group is also SFTP user uh, to home sftp user dot ssh and then if we look the well now the permission will be denied because we changed the user but if you look now that's what we should have so now we have to download the private key as we uh, talked about right so let's and we should move this private key out so let's move the private key from sftp user key to let's move it uh, maybe just one level up. Okay, so the way we'll download this key is use an SSH client from our Windows computer and log in as the Bitnami user and download that key. So let's go ahead and use Bitwise SSH client. And here we'll uh, put Bitnami. Um, I need to configure this. So let's remove, uh, import. Uh, our 
that light cell key. I think that's it. And the IP address for my server. So that will be 3.95.165.19. So this is, I'm using a Bitwise SSH client to connect into the server as the Bitnami user. There we go. And now let's find our private key. There it is. And then let's download that to, sure, we can download it to our desktop. I think I need to modify the permissions on that so that we can download it. So let's go there. So this should hopefully allow me to download the file after changing the permissions and we have it. So now we should be able to set up a new connection in our SSH client. So let's do that. Close out of all this and then let's log out. So our server is the same IP address, but instead of Bitnami, which is the default, we will use our new user, SFTP user. Now we can't use the public key that we um, installed from LightCell, so we will use our new key. Import the key that we just downloaded. There we go. And it's called Global2. We can go ahead and delete that earlier one. We don't need it. So now we have this private key installed, our username, and let's try to log in if everything was configured correctly. And there we go. As you'll see, the user logged in is SFTP user that we just created. The folder that they are logged into should also be opt bitnami apps wordpress HD docs. that's the home environment variable that we set up so that uh, when they log in they are directly um, logged into the wordpress installation folder so from here they can modify uh, the you know files within wordpress or if they wanted to upload any files or things like that they can do sometimes there may be some permission issues that you'll get on certain folders in WordPress, and that's mostly for the security reason. If you do run across some folders that they do not have access to, then you would just need to open up the permissions on that folder temporarily using um, uh, the uh, chmod command, and then remove those uh, or revert back to the old permissions once they're done with that folder. That way you just keep your WordPress secure and not necessarily have it open to some permissions that you don't intend to. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions or run into any issues, put them down in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And until the next video, take care.